five, six, seven, eight, fall. fall. Yay. Yay. <laughs> wow, we did that exactly the same. Hi, everybody. and Welcome back to Gilmore to Say with Tara and Haley. I'm Tara. This is Haley. Hi, Haley. Hi, Tara. It's fall, y'all. It's Gilmore Girls fall officially. It is fall. It's actual fall. Gilmore Girls season is well underway. Yes. And that's what we're here to do today. Oh, I'm so happy. I feel like I'm like in my element. I was sad to see summer go, but I, I am know. excited to lean heavily into like cozy time. Mm. I call it like my like enrichment activities when like the sun goes down early and you can just read and craft and do puzzles and watch Gilmore Girls. Just I love best it. Time. I know. Do you think that's why people love fall? Is because they can kind of like hunker down and eat soup? <laughs> You're just eating soup and doing puzzles. Honestly, yeah. Because it's like, I feel like su- summer has that like FOMO feeling to it. Mm. It's like you want to be out doing things. You want to be out in the sun. You want right. to go to the beach. You want to go out with friends. Yeah. But with fall, it's kind of like, I kind of can't go. It's a little cold. Like, yeah, it's, it gets dark early. You know, I got to oh, go to bed That sooner. I'm not looking forward to, admittedly. I don't like when it gets yeah. dark earlier. I love when it's still light out. I feel like in Georgia, it's still pretty light out even in the fall and winter. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't. I think the sun sets like an hour later than it does in New York here. That's still great. I will say I always like that the sun sets later until the sun sets earlier mm. because it like means, like I, like I said before, like my enrichment activities, as I call them, like it's like like oh I have to go I have to stop working I ha- I can't do anything the sun's gone <laughs> like it's dark now I have to light a candle and yeah, read a book <laughs> I have to go inside I have no other choice yeah. yeah I have to turn on season five episode seven of Gilmore Girls like what else would I do is that your jump high jump jack <laughs> it is oh she's a predictable girly yeah <laughs> I love that truly. for you but before we get into today's episode which is entirely about Gilmore Girls Fall we wanted to mention that we reached our 100th episode we did but it is not this episode <laughs> I know it's so funny we were talking about it in Denver when we were kind of plotting and planning our fall and we were like oh yeah when our 100th episode happens our 100th episode happened cool cool yeah. cool cool, cool. <laughs> what was, was our 100th uh, episode it was Gilmore to Consider number 28. It was the Gilmore con- to Consider Have You Ever uh, oh. people calling in about their Gilmore editions. Okay, a fun episode. This? It was a fun episode. And like we just like chugged right along. Yeah. But um, <laughs> we didn't We just kind of drove like, right by that, didn't yeah, we? <laughs> we didn't have a wedding vow renewal, which is what we were talking about like earlier this year. And we're like, oh, we get the 100th episode. We're going to yeah. have the 100th episode like Gilmore Girls. Yeah. And that did not happen. This is our 107th episode. But we're going to treat it like it's our 100th. I mean, I feel like this is our Christmas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like this is our monumental episode that we've been talking about for. (laughs) Yeah, Fall Santa. We've been talking about this episode for only about a month, but we've been just so excited to get here. Yeah, because I feel like that's the thing right now is like, it's very trendy. This is why we did our Autumn Matter episode last year, Mm -hmm. if you remember it. It was one of our like most popular episodes last fall, of course, because it was about fall. And we actually revisited it recently on Patreon Mm. to see like how our feelings had changed from where we got to with that. Because the reason we did that one is because everyone was talking about Gilmore Girls Fall. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, oh, well, let's help everyone like find all the fall moments in Gilmore Girls, which is what... We're like trying to define what a fall episode means. But what we really found from that episode, if you've listened to it, is that like it doesn't matter what season it actually is. It's about the vibe. It really is. It's about the aesthetic. It's the activities. It's what they're eating, what they're wearing, what they're doing. Yeah, totally. And so all of us who are already watching Gilmore Girls year round because we don't have Gilmore Girls Falls, we have Gilmore Girls Lives. (laughs) Well, we <laughs> what we kind of want to like do in this episode is like give you like more to your Gilmore Girls fall yeah. than just watching Gilmore Girls. A like almost if you're like a main character in Stars Hollow. Yes, yes. We were kind of trying to figure out how we were going to navigate Gilmore Girls fall because of what we did last year with an autumn matter. It's so perfect. We yeah. give everybody the fall episodes, the vibes, even if it's not specifically an episode that takes place during the fall. We were just basically building a Gilmore Girls playlist of all the episodes yeah. that we'd want to play for our Gilmore Girls rewatch, specifically fall episodes for the girlies who watch it year round. I think that yes. people who don't watch it year round, they're just going to plow right through the entire series, which of course respectable. But for us, we were like, okay, how do we really define having a Gilmore Girls fall and celebrating it with Gilmore Girls? But this year, we wanted to do that and take it kind of off the screen and celebrate Gilmore Girls and have a Gilmore Girls fall as if we were the Gilmore Girls. 
And I love that. Yeah. Kind of like kind of like also like a little bit of like a delusional fall a little bit (laughs) like you know like you're like I am the main character of their show that's like very autumnal what are you wearing what are you eating what are you watching what are you drinking what are you reading and we are here to help you decide what all of that is and like in a very like Gilmore inspired way Mm -hmm. with like things they did on the show watch on the show read on the show Mm -hmm. but also being very aware of the fact that like our fall does not always or, like, even our interest doesn't always qu- equate to what they're interested in. Because something that we were talking about before was, like, would the Gilmore Girls watch Gilmore Girls? Mm. I don't know. Because we would. And we have, like, all this, like, content and media that we consume because we love Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. But, like, would they watch it? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I want to <laughs> believe yes. But, like... I don't know. I don't know. I'm really curious what you guys think because I don't know. Yeah. Would the Gilmore Girls watch Gilmore Girls? Because something that you pointed out yesterday when we were chatting is that they don't really watch TV shows. No. They're, like, movie watchers. Yeah. Pop culture references tend to come from movies, music, etc. Yeah. But I don't know. I think that they kind of tend to keep it to, like, I don't know, the world of Gilmore Girls. And so I think that a TV show, watching a TV show, is definitely very, like, trippy. But a TV show watching movies, like, with characters that watch movies and reference them all the time, I don't know. I don't know why that makes sense to me. Yeah, it does. (laughs) (laughs) No, it makes total sense. And so, like, that's why we're, like, kind of going to balance the preferences of the Gilmore Girlies and us girlies. I know. To kind of give you like a well-rounded Gilmore fall. Yeah, I'm so excited. So Haley and I, usually we love to do this. We kind of like bring separate things to the table and then like surprise each other with them on pod. But this is one of the first episodes in a while that we've really collaborated to build a list for the fall, which we're really excited about. So we're basically building a bucket list of how to have a Gilmore Girls fall. And first on that list is have a cozy movie night or have a cozy Gilmore Girls watching night. But it's meant to pay homage to Kiss and Tell, of course, when Lorelai finds out that Dean and Rory kiss and she invites Dean over and they watch Willy Wonka (laughs) and the Chocolate Factory, which is the first movie on my list of recommendations of kind of not so much movies that the girlies would watch. There are some on this list. Yeah. But I wanted to also pick like comfy, cozy movies that feel like Gilmore Girls because I don't yeah. necessarily like you were saying before always align with the things that they watch like love Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory I think it does Sometimes. kind of give <laughs> that like fall vibe in the sense that like candy is a very yeah. big part of fall with Halloween coming up so you can kind of like get those Halloween vibes without it being necessarily spooky it's about candy right I love candy me too not <laughs> chocolate so much but I like candy yeah yeah I guess it's a chocolate factory so we're gonna have Haley stay yeah. away but um <laughs> but I think that like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory to start is like a good movie for the fall to kind of keep in line with Gilmore Girls but yeah. other ones that I had on my list of course you all know me and know this about me by now but When Harry Met Sally is my favorite movie of course But I feel like it's a very, like, comfy, cozy Gilmore Girls vibe because it's a friends to lovers theme. And so you can kind of, like, I don't know, it's kind of, like, running parallel to some of the themes that happen in Gilmore Girls, which I love. You know what's so funny? Christy watched that movie the other day, and she said she watched it for the first time. And she told me that she felt like it was more of, like, a holiday movie, less a fall movie. And I just thought that was so... Yeah, because of New Year's Eve, which makes total sense but I don't know there's just something about it that feels like the fall aesthetic I think probably because of the poster I was like yeah you can't look at the poster of that movie and be like huh when does this like what's the vibe of this movie exactly (laughs) and I feel the same way about Gilmore Girls the opening credits are like that fall foliage and then it has Gilmore Girls over it so I feel like that's why of course vibes included we feel like it's a fall show because of Ryan yeah like Totally. Nora Ephron, like that's like a fall like subcategory I feel like that 100 percent which speaking of the next on my list is you've got mail of course <laughs> enemies to lovers but of course it's perfect there's a bookstore they're trying to save a bookstore there's like a Mitchum Huntsberger character that's like coming in trying to take over <laughs> I love it email is yeah. involved yeah oh email I know (laughs) remember when it was romantic so Y2K I just feel like that's so perfect it takes place in the fall it's got like cozy vibes but on that note I feel like a lot of like comfy cozy vibes don't always go with like 
spooky vibes, but something that for me is like a comfy spooky vibes movie is Practical Magic. Of course, always. I feel like it's like sisterhood and like female camaraderie and like it's got like the magical vibes in there. I think it's kind of perfect for your fall yeah. rewatch because I Little feel like the girlies town. would love Practical yes. Magic. I'm surprised it wasn't in there. Yeah, I know. Well, that we know mm. of. I mean, they watch yeah. so many movies. They watch yeah. so many things that it's kind of hard to keep up. But kind of keeping in the theme of like, I don't know, fall cozy vibes. Something you mentioned was Little Women. Of course. The Greta Gerwig virgin, of course. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just, I love that so much. It's just like, it's just like such a classic. And especially that version of it is just like so, like I was telling you the other day I watched it without the sound on. Yeah. It's just one of those movies that like, you know, like you don't really need it. You just already know what's happening. Totally. You can just sit and cry over, you know, Joe and Lori silently (laughs) i feel that way about when harry met sally i was on an airplane i want to say recently it wasn't our trip back to denver maybe it was the trip to denver but someone was watching it like diagonally in front of me and i could hear it even though i couldn't hear it you know what i mean like i know every word to that movie and i was like i mean that's me and gilmore girls oh sure titanic too titanic you jump i jump jack yeah The thing is, is that I put (laughs) movies on here that I feel also fall in line with, like, the titles of some of the episodes, like Pulp Fiction. Yes. Pulp Friction. So I don't know that that's necessarily, like, fall vibes, but it is kind of Gilmore Girls vibes. I feel like that is a movie the girlies have probably watched a thousand times up, down, and sideways. Um, And the other one that I picked that kind of falls in line with that is They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, which is a play on words for the title they shoot Gilmore's Don't They, which of course is one of the most popular episodes yes. of this entire With good reason. series. And the themes of it kind of run parallel as we described. Like I haven't seen the movie. I know you haven't Me seen neither. the movie either. Yeah. But I've, but I've seen lots of clips of it and it is spooky ooky. Yeah. Or it's like psych- psychological it's thriller. It's a psychological kinda. thriller. And I feel like thriller is very in line with fall. Maybe not necessarily like cozy fall yeah (laughs) but I don't know I put it I threw it on the list we don't have to keep it there but like I feel like it would maybe like wiggle its way in there I don't know I'd be curious to watch it I don't know if it would be like I said like I want to wrap myself in a blanket and watch (laughs) they shoot horses maybe wrap myself in a blanket and like pull it up over my eyes exactly exactly (laughs) the other one that I put on here that I just feel is so Gilmore Girls is Fiddler on the Roof of course Amy Sherman Palladino loves Fiddler she on the Roof. She loves Fiddler on so the Roof. So much that she put the musical in the show. Yes. I don't know if it's Kirk and his wagon with the wheel that's broken. I don't know why yeah. that feels like fall to me, but it fully <laughs> yeah. feels like fall. I think we discussed this when we revisited an on a matter on our Patreon recently. I think I remember saying that I felt like Jews and Chinese food was a fall episode because Fiddler on the Roof, for some reason, feels like fall. Well, it feels like it's like the fall musical. Like you're yes. prepping at school, you know, like getting everything ready. Like that just kind of like, that feels like an essential part of fall. Like totally. going through college. Yeah. So I feel like that's kind of why it feels that way. Yeah. Yeah. I could totally see that. Um, yeah. The other one that I put on there uh, is Pippi Longstocking. Oh, yeah. Pippi. Pippi. I would literally never watch it. <laughs> I don't think I would either, but I feel no. like maybe for Cozy Night In, if you're looking for something that's like, I don't know, old school. Like if you're yeah. looking for like an older movie, something no. that feels kind of classic. I mean, it's definitely old. Yeah. I don't mean to yuck anyone's yum. Mm. Like if you want to, if you like that movie, totally. But I I watched it once and that was plenty for Oh, me. you, I <laughs> see. I've never seen it. Really? I am a Pippi virgin. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, that's the Dean only Forster. thing Dean and I have in common. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. But yeah, I think that I might, you know, I might recommend it to a friend if they're looking for yeah. a Gilmore Girls rewatch. The thing is, yeah. is that like it was really hard for me to not put things on this list that were like The Godfather, Billy Jack, like movies we know, A Star is Born. But like- Cool Hand Luke. (laughs) Yes, Cool Hand Luke. But like, do those things feel cozy? I don't know. Do all of the things that I put on this list feel cozy? I also don't know. (laughs) Yeah. The only addition I'm going to make to this is another Amy Sherman Palladino slash Dan Palladino, like adoration, Okay, is Lord of the Rings. Of course. They reference that so many times. They like Rory and Dean are always going to watch it at 
the movie theater. Yeah. And then there's an entire episode that's titled The Hobbit, the... <laughs> As you like to call The Hobbit, the Couch, and Jason. <laughs> The Hobbit, the sofa, and Digger Styles. styles. I, yeah. ha- I have to say it wrong first to get it right because I can never remember if couch or sofa's right. Um, I can remember all the other ones, but that one always gets me. But I love Lord of the Rings is definitely totally. one of their faves. Yeah, no, I totally add that, but I don't know which one. Probably all of them, right? That's a lot. It's only three, but they're long. Yeah, but if you're not watching the extended like editions, I know, but they're still which... really long. Maybe have a little marathon because mm. I feel like as we go into our next segment of like a movie night, it's like the snacks. And I feel like if you're going to sit down and watch all of the Lord of the Rings movies, you're going to have a different sort of food like mm. spread than mm-hmm. you're going to. Like if you're just watching Practical Magic, you know, have some margs and some popcorn for the girlies. Mm. But if you're going in for like the full movie marathon, that's, that's be true. You really got to hunker down. I feel like for that, I'd need like pizza. And that mac yeah. and cheese. Here's the thing is that when Suki the made that mac and, cheese. mac and cheese, well, there's a bowl of mac and cheese for Lorelai's birthday. Oh, but when you mean Suki the Lord of the makes, party. yes, when Suki makes that, like, it's like a pesto cream sauce mac and cheese. Uh, jalapeno. Jalapeno. Yeah. I totally get down with that. Yeah. Sign me the fuck up. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> I know you, <laughs> mac and cheese is not really your jam. But as yeah. a cheese lady myself, that sounded yeah. so good. If I was a kid and I looked at that, I would be like, get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> I You could not pay exactly. me to eat that. And I'm a kid. I need money. I'm broke. I'm poor. It also reminds me of when uh, it's Lorelai's birthday and there's that like bowl of mac and cheese yeah. that they're eating from. I know. That's like, so maybe like that kind of vibe. If like, it's just you, maybe a bowl of mac and cheese. If it's with a friend, maybe two forks. Like, yes. It's the equivalent of like two straws and a milkshake. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> two forks and a bowl of mac and cheese. I love that. Exactly. I also feel like pizza is like a very like shareable shareable situation. My grandma yeah. used to say that pizza was a snack growing up. My mom was like, "No, it's dinner. It's a meal." I don't That's know. Or like Gilmore. <laughs> I don't yeah. I like think it falls on a spectrum, meals. but like I yeah. would have it there as maybe a quote unquote snack, but something that fills you up because you're hunkered down. You're watching three Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah. You're there all day. That's not a movie night. That's or a movie night. marathon day. Yeah. Couple you're there you're gonna be there for quite some time. So like get your snacks ready. But if we're just doing like a short, maybe just one movie, um, I'm gonna do some stovetop popcorn Ooh. with some candy thrown in. Maybe I'm gonna put some nice toppings on it. Maybe I'll make a little like sweet, or maybe I'll have a little savory option. I yeah. love to put lemon pepper on popcorn. Oh, see, I like to put yeah. cinnamon on my popcorn. Sometimes a little cayenne, yeah. a little spicy, Ooh. a little kick. Yeah. Cinnamon and cayenne mm-hmm. together? I also put oh. cinnamon and cayenne on my sweet potato fries when I make them. Oh. It's very yummy. Do you remember those sweet potato fries we had with the honey? That was really good. Oh my God, that was so good. Honey would be on popcorn. Probably very good. I'm going to have to try it. Yeah. It's like, I love a savory and sweet option. So, like, pizza, popcorn, mac and cheese, but then I also got to have my sweets. So, yeah. that's why I sometimes have put like, popcorn with m&ms or popcorn yeah. with like little gummy bears yeah something 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 like a little savory a little, a, little, a little bit of both yeah yeah and then i have to have like red vines or twizzlers i'm like i teeter between the two because yeah. it depends on which consistency i want yeah because i know that some people don't really get down with red vines because the consistency of them are like very different they weren't as good when i tried it yeah i like a twizzler better yeah i prefer twizzler um also a twizzler probably doesn't have gluten in it but yeah, they both have gluten. They do? Yeah. Because I remember when you had the red vine at her. I know, when I was gluten-free. Times, and I was like, Ugh. Yeah, but Ow. I was already sick. That wasn't why I was That's sick. That's true. But we were like, did I kill yeah. you? A little bit. <laughs> did I do it? Was it me? Um, but speaking of our Gilmore Galentine, I feel like we had a lot of things there for the making of a good like Gilmore Girls movie rewatch snack assortment. Like we had... Yeah. Dessert sushi, king size candy bars. We had Pop Tarts, which were really yes. good. Which like that's why I feel like Pop Tarts are like more of like a snack. They're meant for like these like movie moments, kind mm. of like as a candy. I don't see it as a breakfast food the way that the girlies do. Yeah. I can go either way with that. I never ate it for breakfast. I always ate it as like Mm-mm. a dessert or a snack. Yeah. A snack dessert. Yeah. 
Pop tarts are a snack dessert. But yeah. you were saying that you really like the mini pop tarts, and I do too. <gasps> yeah, They're I think so those are the good. better ones. The Gilmore Girls would hate them because you only get like five in the little box. Yeah, but I, I feel, feel like, like it kind of like adds up to like the size of one. Yeah, one I think them. so too. But maybe yeah. that's why they don't like them. Yeah, I don't know that they were there in the early 2000s. No, but. definitely not. I think they're yeah. like a pretty new development. Yeah. But the other thing that I, they've kind of grown on me, but my mom is obsessed with, Malamars. Mm. Oh my gosh. I put together like Malamars, like the the spelling out happy birthday, uh, Lorelai. I did that for, I guess, Gilmore Girly Girls TikTok. And I talk about her like she is someone who is not me, <laughs> but like the account. It was like the birthday. So I spelled it out on the table. Oh, fun. And I didn't like I don't really love them but my sister she ate all of them really? like I literally got boxes and boxes and boxes of them and she just for like a month would just go in and like have a couple every day I love <laughs> that she, she was like where'd your cookies go I was like you ate all of them <laughs> you know where my cookies went yeah ma'am <laughs> Yeah, that would be my mom. My mom loves Malamars. But the boxes are usually really expensive. I just got a box at my grocery store only because they were on sale. I was like, how Gilmore Girls? And I can give them to my mom. Perfect. A nice little gift. A little present. I'm more of like an Oreo girl myself. I don't ever see the girlies eat like cookies other than like anything Suki makes or a Malamar, I feel. That's fair. You know? No, I think that's true. And they don't really... I've never seen them sell cookies at Weston's either. Mm, they always mm. get like it's usually rum like balls, cakes, cake. rum balls, maybe a piece of pie. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's weird they don't sell cookies. I know. I'll have to check in on that. Yeah. But the other component to it is that they drink a lot of coffee, and I'm not going to drink coffee at a movie night, movie morning, movie afternoon, but not on a movie night. Yeah, I'll drink coffee with like my morning television. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah, but like. Or I'll drink coffee like going on a walk. But a movie night, coffee at night to me scares me. I'm not a coffee at night girl. (laughs) Yeah, I can be a very like a coffee in the morning. Like, yeah, caffeine really gets me. It really does. Me too. Yeah, totally. But um, I'm going to do more of like a, you know, a sparkling water or a Dr. Pepper. You know, you love a Dr. Pepper. Big Dr. Pepper girly. Um. Yeah, or like a seasonal drink. I want to get more into like mocktails. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. I love a mocktail. You know what I love? It is alcoholic, but you can also probably get it non-alcoholic. There are so many non-alcoholic options right now, and I love yeah. them because I'm drinking less and less. I maybe have one when I'm out. A cider. I yes. love an apple cider. Apple cider non-alcoholic. Like I just got some apple cider from my um, farmer's market, which is where I got these really beautiful flowers behind me. I love them. They're so stunning. (laughs) I know. The Rory Gilmore sunflowers. I know. They're perfect. I love them. Um, And I got a little apple cider from this apple orchard that is always there every Sunday. Is it Honeycrisp or is... I think so. Did it specify? It didn't specify. Honeycrisp apple juice or apple cider is the best kind. Mm. Like... I don't know what other kinds there are, but, like, I remember trying it for the first time. Like, Whole Foods has, like, juices. And I, like, made my whole family taste it. And they were like, yes, more. Yes. (laughs) Honeycrisp is probably, I would argue, I'm no expert, but I would argue that that's, like, probably the best apple to juice. (laughs) Yeah, or two, or two cider. <laughs> we are we are not apple experts. If you we are not. Notice. But I love like an apple cider. I also love a hard cider. Back at home, we have this bar that we would frequent all the time when I was in college. I love it so much. I still go whenever I can. And they used to do this thing where they would take Crispin hard cider and they would mm, put it yeah. in a cinnamon sugar rimmed ice cold glass. Ooh. And that to me is fall. So like. I also love Down East Cider. I don't know if you've ever had that. It is so unmatched. Yeah. It's sweet. Their regular hard cider is great. Their pumpkin cider, mm. no notes. Yeah. No I think notes. That's that's the other thing is like you can like make your movie night kind of themed autumnal. Mm. Like, you know, get some pumpkin flavored things. Yeah. Get some cider. Put some uh, cinnamon sugar on the rim for, oh. your, for your pals or for yourself. Yeah. Like, you don't have to have your friends coming over. You can do these nice little setups for yourself. Yes. To, like, have that nice little movie aesthetic. Yeah. Movie night aesthetic. Yeah. No, I love setting up a movie night for myself. And I'll, that's why I will go and get, like, 
like hard cider and I'll do the cinnamon sugar rim and I'll just like sit there, drink my drink yeah. and watch my Gilmore Girls or watch my rom-com and just, I don't know, just have like a nice cozy night in. It's yeah. not a must for me, but it is just like a little extra something that makes it feel yeah. super cozy. And for some reason, I don't do that any other season, the cinnamon yeah. sugar rim <laughs> with the cider other than like fall, maybe, maybe a little bit in the winter if I need like yeah. a little pick me up. Um, yeah. But other than that, drinks for me, I'm not really like a soda drinker, but I'll I'll drink like the occasional um, Coke or Pepsi. So it's usually like, I don't know, water. I'm a, I'm like a <laughs> seltzer girly. I love yeah. a club soda. Club soda Or a little LaCroix. A little LaCroix. You know how much I love that line. <laughs> I know you do. It's I know you do. Nice. So that for me is more like, if I think of comfy, cozy beverages, I'm thinking like a tea. I don't want yeah. a coffee, but maybe a tea. Maybe a tea. Yeah. Or like a chai. Yeah. And a lot of people All love good the options. chai. Yeah. But it's really more about the snackage for me. Yeah. It's the spread. Yeah. But that's our cozy movie night. Love or it. Gilmore Girls rewatch night. Yeah. Whatever you're watching, this is the spread for it. Exactly. So the next on our list is go bookstore shopping or browse your local library which i yes. love i feel like there's something like so just like cozy about like you know putting on a cute little outfit getting your tote bag mm-hmm. grabbing a coffee walking around the bookstore maybe having a plan maybe letting the universe guide you maybe love. getting nothing maybe just that's the whole activity but i also love supporting your local library because your librarian is going to have amazing recommendations they're going to know like old books that you probably haven't read or new releases Mm -hmm. probably going to like be able to be like i liked this book and give you some more recommendations Mm -hmm. um but if you are a part of our book club or you are not i feel like this is a good place to push it because um we have some like spooky books coming up for october i know which i love you talked yeah. about this on our last episode yeah so we're reading Gorgeous. spells for forgetting by adrian young and rebecca by daphne de maurier for our two book clubs which is kind of how i am guiding the breakdown of book recommendations mm. For like reading is sexy, books that feel like Gilmore Girls and like more of like contemporary books. And then we have books that Rory might read, literary fiction, memoirs. I'm kind of like splitting them like that because I feel like the subcategory of like book shopping, going to your library is kind of like having like a plan for your reading fall. If you're like me and it's like essential to your being, even when you want to have like a little plan for it, Mm -hmm. then maybe this is something to get into. Or if you're just getting back into reading or you don't read a lot, Mm. maybe this like sort of is a good guide to, um, you know, find some new things to read. Or, you know, if you're not reading dozens of books a month and you're just a couple, you know, you can pick and choose. But I feel like it's like having like a direction of like read about small towns because this is a small town show. Yes. (laughs) Diving back into a back catalog of an author that you already love and, like, Mm. finding all of the books and, like, really getting to know them, exploring new authors, authors you've heard of and you, like, want to figure out what they're about or why people are loving them, reading old favorites. Like, I feel like fall is a perfect time to, like, dive back into, you know, cozy favorites. Mm. And then stocking up on fantasy reads because I feel like fall is fantasy read time Mm. and, you know, like... The Gilmores are watching Lord of the Rings. I just can't help but imagine that there's some sort of fantasy reading going on. I don't know why Dave Rogowski immediately comes to mind. And like him and him and Brian are like reading fantasy novels in my mind. (laughs) I love that for them. (laughs) Yeah, throw that. I'm gonna throw that idea. Yeah, I have some like options for all of those categories for if you want books that feel like Gilmore Girls or if you want books that are like more of like contemporary romances and then ones that fit into Rory. Um, So books about small towns. We have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston, which is a little bit like a, it's got some ghosts in there, but it's like good ghosts. Mm. Everything's, everything's fine. Everything's upbeat. <laughs> um, we love we good Juni- ghosts. We've got Juniper Hill by Devney Perry, where a small town, there's a small town that, a uh, single mother with a baby arrives to and befriends the restaurant owner in town oh okay and we've got georgie all along where these two characters come back to their their hometown one of them who he was a bit of a bad boy when he was there but now he's cleaned up his image a bit Mm. and then we have a girl who went out into the world and did what she thought she wanted to do but came back and realized that might not have been what it was that she wanted to do so 
little bit of a connection there. Do and with then, that what you will. <laughs> yeah. And then talking about When Harry Met Sally and You've Got Mail, I feel like two books for those is a book I haven't read yet. It's new. It's called You Again by Kate Goldback. Mm. And she apparently paid homage to When Harry Met Sally with this book. Oh. And um, one of my friends went to a book event of hers and she's a really big Gilmore Girls fan. So they were like, you need to read this. Love. So I'm going to add that. And the other one is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. It's set in a small town. They're saving a bookstore. Mm-hmm. They communicate a lot over email. Like, I mean, come on. Very You've Got Mail. Also another person who says that they were raised on Nora Ephron and Gilmore Girls. And Gilmore Girls. So. so it's like she's perfect. I feel like she could fall into like diving into a back category or like a back catalog of an author because mm. she also has a lot of YA romances that are really good mm-hmm. if you've exhausted all of her adult ones. Or if you haven't read her, she's a good new author. Or maybe she's an old favorite of yours. Mm. And she can kind of fit into all of them. Um, because an, uh, a new author of mine that I want to explore is B.K. Borison, who writes seasonal romances. Mm. Um, don't read the winter one, because maybe we're doing that one in December. But she maybe. has a <laughs> she has a town called Love Light Farms. And uh, she has summer spring and winter out and fall will come out next year um Fun. but maybe some new to you authors that i feel like you might love is kennedy ryan who writes really dramatic well-paced romances um the kingmaker series is a little bit like if you love olivia and fitz from scandal like which i do perfect book for you oh i Her- love that show yeah so I'm going to dive into that one. It's literally sitting right in front of me. <laughs> and Love. then the other one is Real by Kennedy Ryan. And it's about an actor and a director. And I that one's my favorite of hers. Mm. But another is Olive Blake, who wrote a book called Alone With You in the Ether. And I know that we've... <laughs> have you seen, like, like what is your Roman Empire? Like, yes. men <laughs> think about the Roman Empire every day. That's, like, my Roman Empire. Is like, that book is, like, kind of fits into any time. I love it. But she also has, like... Um, like dark academia books like oh. one is called atlas six mm. so i feel like that's very fall feeling yeah um but then like old favorites i feel like that's so like personal like whatever your favorites are just dive into them yeah. but practical magic is a book perfect so like i'm telling alice you alice hoffman great cozy magical yeah. mystical spooky I know. a little I- bit Small I feel town. like I could have like had like a book recommendation for each of your movie recommendations, which like which I love that one's easy because that was based on a book. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm so convinced that like fall is a time to read fantasy. Yeah. Which our November pick I'll say is going to be Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross, which is a fantasy about two writers. So I feel oh. like that is going to be a lot of fun. fun. I like kind of tried to find out more about it because I like to go into a book kind of blind but i did hear that it, she um has a single mother and he has an overbearing father who is really wealthy so like we'll see what happens there excited to find out but then some books fantasy books that i'm diving into will be six of crows by lee bardugo jade city by fonda lee and i'm finally gonna read fourth wing which i know doesn't mean anything to you tara but like it's been <laughs> like, the, like, like the big the biggest fantasy novel of the year has been that and so i'm oh, like interested okay. to see how i feel about it yeah but those are kind of like the more like contemporary choices um but then for rory uh, I feel like Howl by Allen Ginsberg, which is like the book that just steals. I mean, why not? Good night, Dodger. Yeah. Exactly. But <laughs> when I looked that up, a book that came up next to it was The Holy Barbarians by Lawrence Lipton. And I was like, why does that sound familiar? And that's the book that Rory book teases in Swan Song. Oh, yes. Yeah. So like maybe you want to be a little bit of a book tease with someone this yeah. fall. and take that one okay but then there were like the classic ones like jane eyre little women pride and prejudice because like before you wanted to invite jane eyre to her birthday party yeah um but in terms of like back catalog new authors and faves um in terms of authors that i want to dive into this fall is like dorothy parker because i feel like that is so essential to gilmore girls so amy dorothy parker drank here productions is literally yes. the name of amy's production company Exactly. Also, Joan Didion, because I've read uh, Blue Nights, 
Slouching Towards Bethlehem and The Year of Magical Thinking, mm. which Rory is reading in A Vineyard Valentine when Lorelai sneaks into the room. But like, I oh. feel like that's definitely one that feels like one that Rory would be reading yeah. and like that I want to get further into. But other authors that Rory might not have read because they were not around at the time um, that I want to get into because I've read a couple of their books, but I want to read more of them are R.F. Kuang and Gabrielle Zevin, who wrote my favorite book last year, which is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Oh. Um, Yes. And then some new authors I want to explore are, a, there's a book called Family Lore by Elizabeth um, Acevedo, mm. who I really want to get into. Okay. I've never read a Zadie Smith before. I want to read that this fall. Okay. Um, there is a memoir by Maggie Smith called You Could Make This Place Beautiful about the disintegration of her marriage and like stepping into herself. And apparently it's very, very good. So that's Like the read. Maggie Smith? No, no, no. Oh, I was Not like... like- <laughs> No, no, no. Sign this me is, up. She's a, she's a poet. <laughs> okay. And this is her memoir. Got it. Um, and then there's another one that just came out by a debut author named Haley Jacobson, and it's called Old Enough, and it's kind of like a coming of age mm. um, that I have heard such good things about that I really want to read. And so I feel like that's like a really broad long list of books that you can choose from it is it is I knew you would come prepared yeah I have I have a little bit too many like I have more that's here. okay I, I was gonna yeah. say we can totally like whittle these down and kind of pick maybe our top few we're gonna post these on yeah. Instagram because yeah we've got to so don't worry if you're trying to write them down you don't have to yeah do not worry we'll also <laughs> probably put like I can put a list of them in the show notes too but yeah. like if you ever want to talk books and you want more recommendations that's what I said on the last one like if you don't like the picks that I've come up with and you're like give me another one just come in my DMs yeah, come to my totally, bookstagram totally this is also the perfect time to start a bookstagram if you have been wanting to do it that, really is know? because I feel Create like fall content. is like the cozy book girlies rise you know like yeah everybody is. we all rise <laughs> I know it's true um but I love that I feel like these are such great options I said this to you last week I just feel like you're so good at finding things that feel like Gilmore Girls like feeding into those tropes and like yeah. picking them out and placing us down right in front of the book that we need yeah. to read to feel that feel those feels know. you know I'm really excited uh, we have a Gilmore to read episode coming up on Thursday yeah. with Kayla Walther who was our August pick for reading a sexy and she loves Gilmore Girls so so much which and I love what happens after midnight is like heavily inspired by Gilmore Girls mm. it's kind of like a jumping off point so like I feel like that will also be a good continuation of like book chats yes I love that I'm so excited to hear it because I just love I love listening to you even if I've not read the book I love listening to you talk to authors because almost all of yeah. them are Gilmore Girls fans that come on yeah and she's like a true Gilmore that's Girls what fan. you said I like, love she said she's watched the parties over like 50 times oh so you so guys got like, along so winningly <laughs> Absolutely. So oh, like I can't she wait. Was, it wasn't like she just liked it. It's like she is a fan. She's like us. Love. I love that. What a perfect guest to come on. I know. I love. So the next one on our list that you put that I loved was Take a Fall Foliage Walk, which yes. I mean is a must during fall. But I also added to that in the style of Gilmore Girls and said take a tour of a perspective or former college because I feel like collegiate life. And, like, the prospect of college is so Gilmore Girls and it's so yeah. fall. Like, when they do the road trip to Harvard, fall. Of course. When in Let the Games Begin, when they go to Yale, fall. First day of Yale, fall. Fall. Ted Koppel's Big Night Out, <laughs> fall. So yeah, I feel some of like... Those were summer, but it's fall. But it feels like fall. And yeah. I feel like, I don't know, some of my memories from, like, Going to school, like back to school feels so fall-like. Like walking yeah. around my old campus, my alma mater, that is totally fall vibes to me. So like whether you're a student and you're looking into going to a school and you're taking a tour or you are in college right now and like you're in that space where the leaves are kind of turning and you get to walk around the quad yeah. and just kind of like take in the air. It's really nice. You can find a study tree that perfectly yeah. fits your back. Yeah. Um, Otherwise... Don't worry about it. Mix that. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't don't. perfectly fit your back. Yeah. But then there's also, like, I don't know, visiting your alma mater and walking around, I think is cool. Yeah. Um, or again, just taking a nice walk through. Just going on a walk. Like a really beautiful fall foliage kind of environment. Yeah. There's like a greenway near me there where you can kind of like walk through like a paved sort of like woods, mm-hmm. um, which is nice. But like also just walking around your neighborhood, like, you know, yeah. like putting on a little scarf 
Or like if it's really warm where you live, just put on some fall colors. Yeah. Like a nice burnt orange or a brown <laughs> tank top. <laughs> yeah. Just really get in the fall spirit with that yeah. burnt orange tank top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I and love it. And then just like walk around. Like like your playlist is important or listen to an audio book. Oh, yeah. You, know, you really said something really cool vibe. while we were talking about this yesterday that in like in the year 2023, Rory would totally walk around Stars Hollow listening to an audio book. Yeah, I, love I like that. the idea of like, uh, it reminds me though of like Dean describing Rory reading Moby Dick in the pilot when he's like, I've been everything watching was you. going wrong <laughs> when he did admit to stalking her, um, <laughs> which red flag immediately. Yeah. No, I think it's cute. It was cute. Though. Yeah, it you was know, cute. Boys just kind of pay attention to you. Yeah. Um, but she talked about like the chaos going on and yes. Rory just kept reading. Yeah. I kind of like that idea of like Rory has her audiobook on and she sees it, mm-hmm. but she's completely tuned out from it. Like Unfazed. Kirk's on the ground, Taylor's hovering over him, Luke has his fist raised, just or a frying pan on. something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and she's just got her audiobook on. She's got a little scarf, just walking around town. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Maybe she has a Weston's coffee. I love she that just for came from girl, Rory. I love that. Yeah. But speaking to kind of the audio of it all, last year we both built out playlists, um, Stars Hollow mixtape, if you will, because I do feel like Gilmore Girls, of course, when we spoke to this, like music is a character in and of itself that really helps tell the story and kind of put you in that that mood for Gilmore Girls. So there are a lot of songs that are at least on my list. I know they're on yours too, that feel like Gilmore Girls and subsequently feel like fall. But for me... And I didn't include this in my Stars Hollow mixtape. I know you included stuff that, like, again, feels like Gilmore Girls, but isn't necessarily in the show. For me, music that kind of puts me in that spirit outside of, you know, the Carol King and the laws, you know, the There She Goes and and all of that, where, like, I could put that on and it could be springtime or the dead of winter. And I'm like, it's (gasps) fine. And then she appears. (laughs) Oh, my God. There are so many good ones. But for me, outside of that, I love listening to like Mumford and Sons in the Fall, The Civil Wars. I will always love listening to Carole King. It just always feels like I'm being wrapped up in a hug. But that's kind of, oh. Yeah. The best. His new album, his older albums, love him. That man's voice could put me to sleep in the best way. I know. Like narrate my life. He's my town troubadour. (laughs) Oh my god, he would be such a good town troubadour. Ooh, we should talk about that in the future, about like an updated town troubadour and who would fit the vibe. Jason mm. Mraz would really fit the vibe. Yeah. The guitar, his voice is yeah. kind of that melodic like narration. Yeah. But Hosier? Yeah. Say less. Like, <laughs> sing to me every day. Yeah. Ugh. I don't think he's on my list, but I, I might add him to my my playlist i might need to update it because like i have like of course like red taylor's version like, oh what perfect. is more than all too well the five minute version or the 10 minute version yeah whichever you no prefer. red is a very fall album i also yeah. folklore is like my end of summer into fall album it kind of ushers yeah. me like in between seasons because of course it came out in the summertime but it just was yeah i don't know like cardigan feels very yeah. fall cardigan hey <laughs> um yeah i don't know it's kind of like a cusp album for yeah. me but i will say if you're on if you're streaming that and you're not watching it i am wearing taylor swift's cardigan and i just referenced oh, that yeah. and that's what that was about <laughs> <laughs> yeah i forgot that there are people who can't yeah. see us yeah <laughs> yep got it but what else is on your fall playlist <laughs> post malone of course yeah um because I just, I don't know. You can skip that if you, because we'll put our playlist in the show notes, like Tara said, that you can skip that on mine if you want to. Yeah. Um, but like Hozier, Brandy Carlisle, mm. I really love. Mm. I also like, something about like country music always feels very summer to me. Me but too. But if it's sad, it feels like fall. Oh. And I feel like some of, there's some of like Casey Musgraves music I that like her. I love in the fall. Mm. Like her new album, Starcrossed. Like there's something Ooh, about Star-Crossed. some of those songs. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I never put that together. There's a song called Justified, and I don't know why, but it just feels so fall to me. Yeah. But yeah, you can check out either of our playlists. Yeah, we'll link them in the show notes. will include a lot of Taylor Swift, but also I like mostly not. It's just like sprinkled in there. Yeah, but also you can build your own fall playlist. Like mine is yeah. exclusively Gilmore Girls music. I don't have yeah. any of the Mumford and Sons or like other Carol King songs that I would put on there. Yeah. I don't have any of that, but. You can oh, also Noah Khan. 
completely forgot about him. Oh, Stick season. There you go. Of course. Yeah. So that's another that's another leader. I have some like songs that feel like fall. There's a song called Heavy by Bird Talker that for me. <gasps> yes. Oh, I love that song. I <laughs> love that song. When I put that on, yeah. I am instantly transported to like 2018. I remember like renting a car and going on a long drive. I had just like broken up with this guy that I really liked. And my friends <gasps> yeah. were sending me like you know, fall music, but also like things that would make me feel better, but would also allow me to like feel my feels and heavy. Yes. Oh, like I'm instantly transported to like driving through Cold Spring, New York, which is like the epitome of fall in yeah. like the Northeast and just like <gasps> oh my God. listening to heavy. It was just so, oh. I think that might actually be on my playlist. Really? Yeah. No I way. love that song. I love that yeah. song too. It's so good. Yeah. Another one that we could add that like is not necessarily, I don't even remember if the song was in Gilmore Girls, but it was Neil Young, which is Harvest Moon. Oh, yeah. yeah totally. I love that song. Was that song in Gilmore Girls? I know they talk about Neil Young. Yeah. Heart of Gold, My Ass. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for the most part, mine is all, like my Stars Hollow mixtape is all Gilmore Girls music. From Gilmore Girls. Yeah. But I know that yours kind of has that, like, those other things woven vibe. into it. Yeah. But you guys can build your own. And if you do, tag us. I'd love to yes. hear it. I'd love, I'd to, love listen to see to them. It. I love when people send me their, like, character playlists. Like, a lot of people send me, like, if they have a Rory and Logan playlist. Yes. I love them. Yes. I always listen to them. I love that, too. <laughs> Don't think they go unnoticed. <laughs> <laughs> she notices. Trust. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of playlists, I think the next on our list, which is, of course obvious in the best way take a road trip with your best friend of course or your mom or by yourself honestly i love driving by myself Haley and i both talked about this recently that we could both like start a podcast just with the thoughts that we have in the car <laughs> yeah no i actually do talk out loud like i'm in a podcast i do as well like it I has have an full intro blown conversations <laughs> with myself sometimes i'll bring on guests oh um, guests the guest is always me <laughs> i am all i am also always the guest i am also the guest i love it i love that so much but we're about to take a fall road trip together we're about to do yes. like the ultimate gilmore girls road trip which i'm going to save all of the things that we are going to do for the footage that we take while we're doing it because we're definitely yes. going to take videos a lot do a of little content vlog. yeah it's gonna be so much fun Gilmore to vlog Gilmore to will. vlog I love that yeah <laughs> I so love that we're, that's gonna be a new adventure for us but yeah hopefully it'll work out I have some very specific out. pit stops that I cannot wait to take and we're gonna travel through oh. Connecticut and up through like Cambridge I think we talked about this already but like yeah. Hartford Cambridge Portsmouth and then ultimately land in the Gunquit for Fan Fest so we're taking like yes. the ultimate Gilmore Girls road trip which I'm very excited about I can't wait to take you through Connecticut I know I've never been I cannot believe that you've never been but I've never been (laughs) oh my god we're gonna have so much fun I feel like Connecticut (laughs) not much I do feel like the fall foliage like I can't tell if it'll be like in full swing quite yet end of September Well, well end of September is kind of tough and also global warming you're gonna have to make a call I'm going to have to make a phone call (laughs) because I want the leaves. I will do what I can. I will say that like already here in New York, they're like starting to change. So I have a feeling that like over the next 10 days. They're starting to change here too. Really? Yeah. I'll have to send you a picture to the entrance of my neighborhood. It's like they're all changing. Oh, wow. I like get kind of sad when they change because I'm like, well, that means that like they're about to fall off and then it's going to be winter (laughs) but I also get really excited dying (laughs) yeah exactly but I'm really excited for it and I'm excited to take you through Connecticut I'm excited to show you like parts of me and myself and growing up that like I'm excited to be in Litchfield (laughs) yes that will be fun (laughs) um but places that you can stop at in like a general sense on your road trip yeah like if you're not going to go to new england this fall yeah you, you don't have go to go to new england have a, yeah. a road trip with your best friend or with yourself or with your mom yeah you can just go drive around but i feel like maybe having some intention to it like even if it's like you want to go to a bookstore that's like an hour away or you want to go to a town that has a gazebo that's a little bit further away and you want to slowly make your way there i feel like there's so many things you can do you can find a cute little coffee shop and try their seasonal beverage i know or you could stop at a local diner Mm -hmm. and like try out and see what's going on there maybe the proprietor is very kind or maybe they are very grumpy you could find out who's to say 
Yeah, but like maybe like find a cute little town to go to. Maybe they have like thrift stores or bookstore. Yeah. Or just like maybe there's a farmer's market. Oh, you know, I love that. Just drive through some uh, woods maybe. Find a nice little like. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you just like drive a- clear into the forest. <laughs> just like drive. Just Actually, keep going. Just become a witch in the woods. <laughs> you know. I, some of us really want to do that. I just told my therapist that's what I wanted out of my life. <laughs> and she told me I could be a witch in the woods on the weekend. <laughs> wow, I love that for you. Yeah, a weekend so witch. Yeah, I'm gonna be a weekend witch. Um, but or just like you know what I mean, like finding like a nice yeah, little yeah, like yeah. tree lined path to drive. Yeah, that always feels very cozy. No, I love um, that. Whether by yourself, because I feel like doing things like this, like by yourself, and like having like an intention behind it is really fun. Mm. Um. Or, you know, grab a friend, get your mom, yeah. whatever. Or your dad. I don't know. Yeah. You saying mom. Yeah. But you can do it with your dad. Yeah, or we're just saying mom but... because mother, daughter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, next, we have throw a fancy Friday night dinner. You know, like make a nice little dinner for you and your friends. Or throw a Friendsgiving. Because I feel like a deep fried Korean Thanksgiving is like yes. very thematic for fall. But also, we want to throw in like a nice... I don't know, kind of like bouge Friday night dinner could be fun. Yeah. And it's like the split of like having like a very Gilmore night versus having like a very Stars Hollow time Mm -hmm. because you can like make your friends feel obligated to dress up. Yeah. Serve them some martinis, make a pot roast, you know. Do a murder salad. (laughs) You can just say murder them. (laughs) I was like, no, no, let's back up a little bit. Take two. Um, (laughs) But murder mystery. Mm. coming soon to the podcast perhaps Mm -hmm. and then with friendsgiving that's so nice to just have like you know make food have a bunch of people over or you know just like one friend or two friends yeah have it keep it really low-key totally totally there's no like right or wrong way to throw a friendsgiving i feel it's so funny because brett and i were talking about thanksgiving this year it's his favorite holiday and last year that's so blair waldorf of him i know (laughs) oh he is blair waldorf i'll make sure to tell him that (laughs) um he's gonna love that but thanksgiving's his favorite holiday and last year we didn't get to spend it together because he was out on a contract so this year we get to be together for our first thanksgiving and I would I like to go home and be with my family because they're so close. But he traditionally, because he's far from his family, does Friendsgiving every year. And it's so sacred to him that he was like, Yeah, can we do both? And I was like, Yeah, of course we can do both. But like <laughs> Friendsgiving is oh very God. sacred to him because they've built this like community. And I feel like it's yeah. giving like Lorelai Rory and all of the Thanksgivings that they go to. Yeah. The Kim's sacred. Suki's sacred. Luke's sacred. The, Babette they and didn't Moria realize it was, sa- it was sacred because they were going to drop Luke's, but then they realized it was sacred to Luke. Mm-hmm. And so they were like, oh, back up. <laughs> I know. I know. I love it. So I feel like a Friendsgiving is kind of the perfect thing to do in the fall. But yeah. leading up to that, like just throw like a potluck with your friends or invite them over for like yeah. a nice dinner. Yeah. I think it's so Promptly much fun to at like. Seven. <laughs> Promptly at seven. I feel like it's so much fun to get dressed up at be at home for some reason yeah so I feel like that's a nice it's a nice vibe. it's almost like a staycation yeah exactly it. so next on our list is make pumpkin pancakes with cinnamon butter very self-explanatory yeah or you know? go get pumpkin pancakes with yeah. cinnamon butter at a diner really, i feel like a lot of if, diners i know denny's does it isn't that hilarious denny's do they? yeah or at least they used to we used to go to denny's yeah. all the time when i was in college and they had pumpkin pancakes with cinnamon butter mm. it was so good yeah you might have to do some recon on that one if you're not going to make them mm-hmm. but eating gilmore larissa she has a recipe for them she does so you can head over there if you're gonna make homemade ones yeah if you're gonna get ambitious after your pumpkin picking because pumpkin picking mm. is such a huge staple in yeah. like, you know, just fall culture, I feel. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like if you're going to go pumpkin picking and like really do the thing, yeah. then you can make them into pumpkin, the pumpkin pancakes. put the pumpkin on the table. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, you can do that. You can really, you know, get in the there. In. Pumpkin pancakes, <laughs> pumpkin pie. Yeah, I was thinking more of like you put the pumpkin in the middle of the table. Oh, yeah. And then, While like, you make. Do a store bought. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, Trader Joe's has amazing pumpkin pancakes. Yeah. Regular and gluten free. They're I've, unmatched. I feel like that's one of the things is like going to Trader Joe's. Like we can't really add that to the list because it's not necessarily Gilmore. Crazy. I heavily considered buying my like fall Trader Joe's haul this morning, which yeah. I haven't done yet. But if I brought it here, we would have to do a whole separate episode just about, t- <laughs> just about Trader Joe's. Bonus episode. 
episode. I love it. <laughs> Honestly, I could. I could talk about it Cause, for Because that lake is one of the things hours. that feels like fall. It's like going to yes. Trader Joe's and getting your little fall haul. Oh, they have so fall haul, y'all. <laughs> many. Fall haul, y'all. At Trader Joe's, they have so many good things. But amongst them is pumpkin pancakes. And yeah. they have like pumpkin butter. And I'm sure that they would Ooh. make some sort of cinnamon butter. Or I think that they have cinnamon butter. Country Crock definitely does. They have like a store-bought cinnamon yeah. butter. So you, you can just put make cinnamon in the butter. I think so. But I don't Doesn't know. Doesn't seem that hard. I don't know. <laughs> Larissa <laughs> might actually have like a legitimate <laughs> yeah. recipe for it. But yeah. I just feel like pumpkin her. pancakes for me every year are a staple from Trader Joe's. Not just because Luke, you know, yeah. makes them. But mm, I love. Yeah. Alternatively, some pumpkin bread. Oh, That's yeah. Nice Anything one. pumpkin I feel is like. Yeah. Perfect. I feel like that would be good with cinnamon butter, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. So next we have go thrifting or go to a town rummage sale or shop your closet. Yeah, Which I love. All good things to do. All Being good sustainable things. in the fall. Yeah. I mean, thrifting is something I do year round. It's something I discovered that I loved during the pandemic and, like, have never looked back. But there's something about thrifting fall clothes. Like, Brett and I were talking about going to L Train Vintage here in New York to, like, Mm -hmm. get some really cozy fall sweaters and, like, flannels and stuff that, of course, are, like, also Gilmore Girls staples. Yeah. But the town rummage sale, an episode that feels like (laughs) fall and yet is not. Like, for me, that's a comfy, cozy episode. For you, I know that that's, like, an anxiety-inducing episode. Concert Interruptus is, like, one of my (laughs) no-go episodes. I know. (laughs) But it's so good. And a town rummage sale, to me, feels very fall because every year my town does, like, a town... It's a town rummage sale, but they call it something completely different. Um, but it's basically like the county fair. It's just more over like one giant tag sale. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fun. We have a fair at the end of the summer in the town right next to us. Um, it's Ooh. called the Bridgewater Fair. But um, oh, it's my in the town, summer. Yeah, it's at the end of the summer. It's in August. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but we host like a town rummage sale that like they've been taking donations for for the last like three weeks. And my mom, when I was home the other day, she was like putting bags together to bring over to the location where they are collecting. And I was like, man, that was that was fall to me. We would always go to this. Gosh, I wish I could remember what exactly it's called. But it is like a town rummage sale. It's great. Tag sales feel feel like like fall. Yeah. And I think that the Gilmore girls wear clothes that like are very accessible and buying them thrift like when you're thrifting or just in general like in your own closet Mm -hmm. they're wearing like big sweaters turtlenecks Mm. um i know a lot of people want to wear rory's pilot sweater oh my god um and like that's one of my favorite like outfits is like you know like a big sweater with like a short skirt peeking out the bottom with tights and boots like Mm -hmm. that's really like my ideal fall look totally um because i feel like rory does that a lot where she'll wear like uh like the pilot the other pilot look is where she's wearing that red shirt with the black skirt the red turtleneck that short sleeve so cute so cute i love love, that look they love a turtleneck those girls they really do Um, they love i would also say like a statement outerwear Mm. because like they have their sherpa which like what is gilmore girls without a corduroy sherpa jacket for real but the but lorelei also has that jacket that she wears in uh lost and found that outfit that we like adore so much where she's wearing skirt Mm -hmm. with boots Mm -hmm. yes (laughs) and like that's just like the classic one and rory's version of it is in will you be my lorelei gilmore when she's fighting with logan and mitchum walks in oh that outfit that she's wearing it's like a little pinafore dress yeah that's like rory's version of that outfit Mm -hmm. that i love so much yeah um so i feel like it's super easy to dress like a gilmore it really is they really wear a lot of staples i mean of course like they have quirky outfits that it's like yeah you will only find this on a gilmore girl but I also think that, like, you know, the big chunky sweater, the turtlenecks, the Sherpa jackets, the denim jackets, um, the jeans, because, like, now flare jeans are back in. Yeah. I myself am a high-waisted girly. I will never do the low rise, but, like, bless Laura like Gilmore. Mid-rise. Mid-rise is, like, hit or miss for me, but low rise, rise, I'm so glad that that went out with Y2K, and I hope it never comes back. Um, Well, there are some people who can pull off a low rise Oh, don't get me wrong. It's just not me. Like, you guys have probably seen a video that went viral of um, a girl on TikTok doing Lorelai's outfits. Her name's Austin Paula, and she is a friend of mine who's, like, she is a Canadian content creator, and she wears low rise jeans, and they look amazing on her. Bless her. <laughs> but I just, I never would. But, like... I totally understand. I fully get it. I fully get why you're rocking that, because, like, you can have, like, a hip hugger, and it probably feels very comfortable, whereas just, for yeah. me, that's just not my style. 
yeah, I just don't like where it hits. Me too. Not going to lie. Not, not, not lie. for me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I feel like the other thing is like they wear a lot of graphic tees with long sleeve shirts under them or Lorelai does. Yeah. So that's like super easy one to recreate. Um, something that they like neglect in this show is they don't wear a lot of sweatshirts. Like they were a lot of, I, they were more like zip ups. Zip ups, little like hoodies yeah. that like like closely fitted. But I feel no, like that I'm was for, like, like Y2K, early 2000s style. It was like a, it's like, like a small zip up with a little hoodie. Why can I like so clearly see like Paris Hilton? Like that's like my thought. Yes. It's like the little like zip up hoodie. But like for me, fall is like sweatshirts. Mm. Well, like all year round, I'm a sweatshirt girl. Yeah. Regardless you are. of what the temperature is. You totally are. Um, so I feel like that's the one thing that I like from my closet I think I would add into fall mm. which is just like any kind of sweatshirt like thrifted ones yeah ones that have Taylor Swift's face on them <laughs> also true our ones merch that, I didn't really become merch. a sweatshirt girly until you and I started the podcast because I was starting to get really a lot of merch and I was like oh I really like this yeah. it's really nice it's to be able to so just nice. like throw on and kind of do your thing I'm a big yeah. like sweater girl i love an oversized yeah. sweater i a love very cute one right now thank you um i love the like denim mini skirt or just like a mini skirt in general with the tights and the boots yeah. that is totally my style tights a turtleneck uh like a fitted yeah. turtleneck is so me mm-hmm. i'm a big like blanket scarf girl and i love a beret yeah oh a little hat a little fun love hat. A little hat i love like yeah. a cloche hat too those are really fun yes. for me um so that's kind that of like Lorelai's pink hat you remember that pink one she wears yes yes I'd say that's a no for me <laughs> I can't really pull something like that off or at least I haven't tried but like a little cloche hat is something I like but a beret yeah. I really started to rock more when I was um when I got my hair cut yeah now that oh, I have short so hair cute. I feel like a beret with short hair perfect so cute no no the other the other part of that that i'll add to it is like maybe less thrifting is like the makeup that they wear is mm. like you know very like autumnal colors like berry lips they do lots of like lashes mm. so not like fake lashes but it's more of like mascara it's mm-hmm. like very simple makeup yeah i feel like that's kind of where i've leaned lately because like you know I work from home mm-hmm. like there's no reason to put on a ton of makeup and i feel like i used to like go to work full glam um like full face of makeup but I just don't do that anymore totally. and I feel like there's so many looks that Lorelai has like I love when she matches her eyeshadow to her outfit I know that's so, so like, fun maybe that's a fun yeah like maybe that's a fun option for your Friday night dinner that you dress up with your friends mm-hmm. um or you know just try something you know simple I love it I love doing a little brown eyeliner right now that's yeah what I feel like. Look at that. I also have the Ulta Vicious Trollop lipstick. Yes. I don't have it because I lost it, but I will she find it. She did lose it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard to find it to wear in this episode. I know. But... I know. It's okay. You'll yeah. find it one day. Or I we'll will. buy you a new one somewhere. They don't have it anymore. So. Maybe on Poshmark or eBay or something. Ooh, maybe. Maybe. It's true. I love you were like, don't give up. <laughs> yeah. I'm really just encouraging you to find this. I'm like, we'll, we'll find it for you. Yeah. Next on the list is make your space as cozy as Lorelai's house, which I think is so yes. important for fall. Like for me, I love decorating for fall. Like this is not to knock anyone out there who is like, bam, Halloween or bam, yeah. leaves. <laughs> no because there's two people it's like the halloween people and like the fall cozy people and you can be the same no 100 sure. but i feel like they kind of divide yes and my mom was always a big decorator growing up i mean for any holiday like labor day she would like dress the house up <laughs> like in little ways like yeah. not in like an egregious way but you know yeah she is a very like holiday driven lady whereas for me like i like to keep my apartment having those like green tones year round because i feel like it plays really well into cozy fall because those autumnal colors can go well with green springtime because it's like florals go well with green and yeah. summertime because you can do like your white linens and yeah. everything or christmas you just add a little a little red, red pillow that's what i'm saying i love yeah. it so like what i have for those of you who are watching us on youtube what i have behind me is very like autumnal like i have this candle yes. here which is like it's a marigold a nice setup thank you very aesthetic i got very, these very cozy i got these from the farmer's market um the other day and i was like perfect this is like really ushering me into like the fall season like i love a um I love like a sea salt caramel. So like this green bowl over here, I'm going to put like caramels in it, which I'm really excited about. And that (laughs) to me feels, no, I'm not a candy corn lady. Are you a candy corn lady? Not even the little pumpkins that look like, like taste like candy corn, but they're pumpkins. No, because I don't like like candy corn. Oh, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. No, not my thing. Oh. 
But they're cute. They are cute. You have to eat them. Well, they're that's the thing. Cute. They would just be there for decor. And so, like, I don't want to waste them. Like, if someone's going to eat them, please. I could come and eat them. Eat them. <laughs> yeah. I might put, like, Reese's in there. I forgot to mention Reese's. Yeah. I love those and Reese's yeah. Pieces. But I think that just, like, to keep everything neutral and also because I love sea salt caramels, that's what I'm going to put in that little bowl. Yeah. Which would be really nice. Halloween, though, to, like, have a little candy. I know, exactly. A little day. trick or treater. <laughs> like, maybe I'm the trick or treater. <laughs> You are the candy giver and the trick or treater. Exactly. I'm going to ring it. my own doorbell. <laughs> Luna's going to open the door with her little yeah. paws. Yeah. Present the candy. I love it. I'm very excited about or it. Or she doesn't have the candy and it's a trick. <gasps> it's probably a trick. Knowing Luna, yeah. it's definitely a trick. Yeah. Um, but the other way that I like to really set up is kind of with like cozy pillows. I'll change the covers yeah. on my pillows a lot. I also love like a big chunky knit blanket which I'm probably going to get one for my couch. This is like a little bit of a thinner, like summertime throw. I love like a chunky knit throw or fuzzy throw for the holiday, for like the fall season. Yeah. For the the holidays. No. (laughs) Holidays. For the holidays. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> no, I like I like more of like those really soft fleece ones from like Home Goods. Yes. My mom got one for me. It looks like my cup. I'm gonna show you. It's like got little like ghosts oh, on it that are like it. walking their dog. Oh, that's so pulling cute. a little wagon. And that's what my blanket looks like. Cause it's not quite Halloween, but it is because it's ghosts, right. but it's pink. But the other thing is candles. Like I like to turn off the big light, light a couple of lamps, yeah. and then just live by candlelight. I whether do too. it's like kind of like a musky one or like oak yes like cedar cedar or like a cider candle oh those are nice i like a spicy like a- candle but i just recently got i moved it so that i could put my um set up here but i got like a leather and oak one which mm. smells so good what is this one i have one that is leather and oud it's dark academia Ooh. it smells like melancholy moods and secret societies <gasps> oh my god from, wait that's um, so perfect for it's an Gilmore antidote Girls. candle from barnes and noble oh my god and so yum so nice but the thing that i like to do is i don't light it i put it under a candle warmer do you have a do you have a candle oh, warmer it's I like don't. which it functions both as a lamp and like melts it melts the wax but it doesn't burn it Mm. so it lasts for forever like I've literally been burning this candle for like three weeks and like look at it oh my god I know it like just doesn't disappear wow that's Um, really nice yes I I love it so much and I feel like that really creates like the nice ambiance yeah everything that's going on the other look that I love is I love to get roses and like yellow or orange or red and then let them die Uh uh-huh and like clean out the water and put them back in the vase so you have like dried flowers you know, kind of, yeah totally just like dead roses <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of dead roses yeah mandy's <laughs> always like are you gonna throw those away and i'm like no, no. it's part of the decor yeah i want everything to like, look dead dead flowers <laughs> <laughs> no but dried flowers are very fall to me yeah they're very especially like especially when like bright yellow roses die mm. they become this like really wilted golden color yeah love love absolutely so those are kind of some of the ways that we like to like cozy up our place which yeah. i think is super important to set the tone set the mood yes um next on our list we have volunteer for a local town event including your best friend's campaign for town selectmen i think of there course. are so many town events that like of course make everything feel like Gilmore Girls like yeah and that subsequently make it feel like fall like the bit of basket for me feels like fall even though it's not a fall episode yeah but in the vein of fall it's like voting the campaign of course very fall um when you have to you vote know, in November exactly when Rory uh volunteers and is like dressed as a pilgrim in kiss and tell yeah 24-hour dance marathon a, is that a food drive that she's doing I think so a I haven't watched that episode in a yeah. while it's almost time. It yeah. actually is time. <laughs> By the time this airs, it's time. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like volunteering for your local town events feels like fall. There's yeah. just something about like the camaraderie of your like getting together with your town. I don't know, like yeah. the rummage sale. Like it just feels like fall, yeah. you know? Or even if like you can't like I guess like volunteers like participating, like if you like like if you're like a runner doing like a 5K for a local charity yeah. or something like that or like finding like I know my fair happens like in the middle of October and it's like so much fun, but they have charity nights, so like your ticket 
like part of your ticket price goes towards the local charity. Yeah. Um, but in that same vein, like of like shopping your closet, maybe getting rid of some of your summer things or old fall things oh, that you're I not going to wear this year and giving it to, you know, like there's a local women's shelter that we can donate to in my town and they come and pick it up so you don't bring it to them. Yeah. Um, so like finding things like that too. I love that. And, and like making everything work for everyone. Yeah. Making everybody's yeah. fall a Gilmore Girls ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have visit your local coffee shop, duh. Duh. Beg for like, coffee. Find out if they're grumpy or if they're nice. And if they're nice, don't bother them. But if they're grumpy, <laughs> just beg for it and then pay for it anyway. Exactly. <laughs> what would you say is your, like, go-to fall drink? See, it was a, a brown sugar uh, latte with soy milk. Mm. But I'm trying to drink less caffeine right now because it is making me anxious. <laughs> anxious girlies. Yes. Yes. So I'm, like, trying to go more with, like, iced tea right now because it is still, like, 80 degrees in Georgia. Totally. So I'm not sure what my, like, fall drink is going to be. Um, but I am – I do love, like, a little chamomile tea before bed. Ooh, yummy. Um, that's – I like that a lot. I used to love getting a chamomile tea from Starbucks with, like, steamed soy milk in it. I don't know why that used Ooh, to just, like, really yum. hit the spot for me. It's really good. I used That used that to be, like, my really go-to good. drink in college when I wasn't drinking coffee. Yeah. Also, Mandy, she just got me one of, like, a – what is it called? Is it, like, when you steep the tea – when you put the loose leaves oh, in yeah, it. Oh, yeah, 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 she bought me some loose Love. leaf tea from, like, her, her, like, bridal tea earlier this year before she got married. I really liked the tea for it because it sounded like a character I like from a book, actually. Um, and she got it for me, and she got me, um like, a little thing to steep my tea in, like, Love. for an individual teacup. So, like, I'm excited to, like, because fall for me feels like creating, like, nighttime rituals, mm. like, so it's like, you know, getting cozy in bed and like making yourself a cup of tea, turning on your audiobook, making some bracelets. <laughs> of course, like, Haley's Beatery um, opening yes, soon. It will be here. It's like as soon as like the, the sky, not the, I'll say the sky sets, as soon as the sun sets sooner, you know, we'll have the full beatery on. I love that for you. a little cup of tea. So I feel like that's more of my fall vibe this year. I love. It's more of a tea. Yeah, I think a tea is kind of perfect. I know people like like a chai tea latte in the fall. Mm-hmm. I am forever pumpkin spice girly. I mean, like, yeah. I own that wholeheartedly. I know that it's, like, trendy to like pumpkin spice lattes. No, I like that, though. It's like that whole thing of, like, I'm not like other girls. It's like, no, I'm just like I am just like girl. all these other girls. Um, but for me, I really – I've talked about this on po- – at least on Patreon. I don't know if I've talked about it on here, but I'll talk about it again if I have. I do not like Starbucks pumpkin. I don't like yeah, it. I don't like pumpkin syrups. I'll take one little like little squirt of pumpkin in yeah, my Dunkin' Donuts. Sauce. Yes. Yeah. In my Dunkin' Donuts ice latte, which I got the other day. It was my first pumpkin latte of the season. It was great. Yeah. Always iced. But the coffee shop that I used to go to in Washington Heights, actually Hamilton Heights, called the Tipped Cup, they without a shadow of a doubt, made the best pumpkin spice latte I've ever had in my life because they made on site a pumpkin ganache that they would mm. like. Do they still make it? I don't know. I haven't been there in a while now that I'm oh. not living near there. I haven't yeah, been there. Yeah, it's kind of far to go for it a, is. a pumpkin spice latte. But trust me, I would. It's yeah. <laughs> so good. It's so good, like unmatched. And so that's why I feel like I can't really actually enjoy other pumpkin spice yeah. lattes. It's also probably one of those things like you probably would like the Starbucks one had you not had one that was like so far superior because I think sometimes that's where that ends up being. Actually, I have to be honest with you. I didn't like the pumpkin spice at Starbucks before this happened. Oh, really? Because yeah. you're a Dunkin' girl. I'm a Dunkin' girl when it comes to that kind of stuff. I'm a Starbucks girl yeah. for everything else. Like the brown sugar <laughs> oat milk chicken espresso is my jam. I yeah. love it. But honestly, for me, an oat milk latte with like a little bit of cinnamon on top if I want to be festive. Yeah. That just that does Works the heart every good. time. Yeah, exactly. We're not drinking it black or with what is it, three splendas? Three sugars? What is it the Lorelei puts in hers? Oh, I don't know. I think it's three sugar. I think it's sugar, not splenda. Yeah. Yeah. Kirk's the one that wants splenda. Oh no, equal. Wanted, equal and he wanted ten Six. of them and she puts it in his yeah. coffee, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> So the next on our list is, of course, go apple picking. But what I added to that was go apple picking and make cider ice cream in the ice cream machine that you anonymously got as a gift for the wedding you never had. Perfect. <laughs> we all got that. I just remember I think that's pretty when... universal experience. Exactly. <laughs> I think we've all experienced that. I just yeah. love when Suki goes, we can make cider ice cream. <laughs> 
I'm like, Perfect. sure. Why and then not? she didn't want it. And then she, she like, didn't want it. Yeah. That made no sense to me. I was like, why no did sense. you say keep it so we can make cider ice cream if you already have an ice cream maker? Yeah. She was like lusting after it. And she was like, I don't want it. Yeah. She was like. It was that thing I like, I want what I can't have. And then when she could have it, she was like, eh, no. I didn't really want like it. it. Have you ever been apple picking? Yes. I've never been <gasps> because I think it's one of those activities that like. It felt like you needed a lot of friends to go do it. Mm. And I never had a bunch of people to go with. So I'm going to make my mom and my sister go with me. I will say it is, my friends. <laughs> it is more fun in a group. Yeah. I never, it doesn't feel like the kind of thing of like, I'm going to go by myself to pick some apples. <laughs> I will say like the act of apple picking is not really the exciting part. When I go to an orchard to go apple picking, I'm more excited about going into the shop and getting like the apple butter, the pumpkin butter, like yeah. that kind the of apple stuff. Donuts. The apple cider donuts. Oh. Yeah. But like the actual act of apple picking to me is not really that exciting, but I think it's made yeah. to look more exciting because you're taking pictures, you're having a good time. It's the fall yeah. like aesthetic of it all, you know? See, I like I like activities like that though where they're like really really low key. You're not doing much. It's mm-hmm. like really low pressure, really low um stakes. It kind of That's feels true. like the equivalent of like shopping for a book, but you're just picking apples. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. more about the aesthetic and like the idea. Like the idea of going apple picking is so exciting to me or even pumpkin picking. Yeah. But like when you get there, I do feel like the joy of it all is the people that you're with and the company you keep yeah. and like Again, going to like the store and getting the apple cider donuts and the bu- and the pumpkin butter yeah. and the apple butter. Less about actually picking out a pumpkin. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to go. Maybe and I'm, I'm wrong. gonna I'm gonna come back and maybe I'm gonna be like, this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me. I had such a great time. I will say that like <laughs> some of the activities that come along with going to an apple orchard or a pumpkin patch, like drinking cider, going on a hayride, like that stuff mm. is fun. Which is fall. Which is very fall. Springtime is not the time for hay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but next on our list, we have tailgate at a sports game. Local yes. for your high school, a collegiate sports game, professional if you're really fancy like that. Yeah. Who's to say? Wear the right color. Make sure you wear the right color. Yeah. Or just don't wear either of those colors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or just wear something very neutral. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like love that episode. Home, I love you know? where, yeah, yeah, it's football season. Like, Brett is so excited. Yeah. He loves football. So, like, gets really into it. But I do think yeah. that going to, like, a fall football game, like, for your high school or for your college is so yeah. on brand for Gilmore Girls Fall. It's so much fun. Like, yeah. as you know, I really like sporting events, surprisingly. She loves a really group love- activity. I love crowd participation. She I love does. the wave. I feel like that's she such a loves weird fact wave. about me. <laughs> I, I love, love that wave. about you. I love when I love, you like, sing and I love that you love the wave. <laughs> Should we do it now? <laughs> do you want to? Sure. Everyone at home does it too. All right. Go ahead. Five, six, seven, eight. Wave. <laughs> Just took that so seriously. Five, six, seven, eight. Wave. <laughs> you looked me dead in the eyes. <laughs> That was a cheerleader moment. That was a Haley getting ready. <laughs> That's how we start all of our episodes. It's, the five, six, how seven, we start eight. all our episodes. Is that why you got into crowd participation? Because you were a cheerleader? Maybe. Maybe I was the crowd, you know, Yeah, instigator. you got the crowd excited. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. No, I, speaking of cheerleading, though, because my brother came over because um, I went to the University of Georgia, which is like the number one ranked team right now mm-hmm. um, in terms of football. Yeah. Um, so, like, I live in, like, a really big football family. Yeah. Um, and we watch it, and my brother came over for his birthday, and we were, I was, like, asking them questions, like, are you a football cheerleader? Don't you know the rules? I'm like, yeah, but I sit on the sidelines facing the game, and I couldn't see it. Oh, yeah. Because all of the football players are standing in front of you. Yeah. And so when I, like, was like, no, our coach would tell us when it was offense or defense, and they're like, you're that dumb? And I was like, <gasps> we can't see the – this was – no, this was, like, back in high school. This was not my family saying this. <laughs> I was like, but, excuse but I, me. But I remember explaining it, like, in one of my classes, and they're like, you're so dumb that you don't know – like, you guys don't know what, like – who has the ball? And it's like, no, no, because I can't see the game. Yeah. Because the football players follow so the game up and down the sidelines. while you're cheering. And then also yeah. you have to turn around and pay attention to the game and know the rules. No. I was a cheerleader no. for Prop Warner football for many years, like six or seven yeah. years. I had no idea what was going on. I still don't. I've learned more yeah. in the last year from dating Brett about football than I ever did in like the six yeah. years that I was a cheerleader. 
And I, like, joke that I know a lot less than I do because, like, I've literally had to, like, watch, like, every single sport since I was younger because my brother. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. But it's not that we're dumb. It's not no. that, It's not even that we're not paying attention. It's that, like, yeah. there's just so much activity going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I also love sporting events because, like, all, like – with your team you all wear matching outfits you all wear the same color Mm -hmm. like it's cute Mm -hmm. it's cute the boys do that i think they like put on the they got their little jersey they got their little favorite character on the back you know exactly it's cute exactly they watch sports every week and like they put on the colors even if they're at home i know it's It's a whole thing (laughs) yeah and it feels very fall especially football like a football game just feels like fall and especially when you were going to school like the football season was in the fall it was a very like group effort to you know yeah. go and like the air was crisp I used to love going to football games even though I had no idea what was going on in the fall yeah. when I was in high school I love stuff like that and Ted Koppel's big night out I yeah. would argue that that's one of like the top fall episodes of season yes. four it's a and, good like, one the snacks talk about snacks like sports snacks so good so much fun like I I love stadium snacks yeah crowd participation stadium, stadium snacks and the wave I love that for you <laughs> Next on the list is go on a hike to reconnect with yourself. Are you Hmm. a wild movie or wild book? I don't know the answer to that question. Also, I should have added wild to the list. Oh, yeah. We could have added that to our book movie list. We could have added that. Well, we still can. I've never read wild, but I have read other Shale Strayed books, which I should mention, one of the friends that we made at Podcast Movement has a podcast called We Can't Print This from two writers slash journalists oh my who God. talk about things that like they can't put in the article or that the author didn't put in the book. We so can't cool. print this, but they're talking about it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And their first guest for season two was Cheryl Strait. Yes. And she came on and was talking about it. Oh my God, I loved so it. I loved that, meeting her at Podcast Movement. I know. Definitely check it out. If you if yeah. you type it into Google or Instagram, you'll be able to find yeah. it. We can't print this. So yeah. To type it into Apple or Spotify. And you can listen to a Cheryl Strait. But in terms of book or movie, I haven't ever read that book, but I have seen the movie. Reese Witherspoon? Um, yeah. So I like... Oddly, I think I would pick movie just because I've never read the book. Okay. I feel like I should be a book person. I was going to say, let's come back to it if and when you read the book, because I think yeah. that I would want to know, like, with you having a frame of reference for huh. both. Yeah, we'll come back. I'll have to I'll have to read the book and then watch the movie, and then I will let you know yeah. which one I am. But people, when I, like, I posted on my Instagram story last night, you know, like, what is your favorite fall activity? Because I was nervous that I had forgotten something, like something yeah. classic that people love to do in the fall. And someone said, go on a hike. And I was like, oh my God, of yeah. course, go on a hike. I love, I do love that. There's Me like too. a trail near here. And like, it's just so, it's yeah. so nice. Especially in the fall, the air is crisp. Yeah. It's like still a little Bring warm. Bring a little picnic. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. And then the last one I have on my list is throw a little party and invite the whole town. A birthday party, mm. a funeral for a cat. Who's that to one's say? hard to plan for. It is. <laughs> it is hard to plan for. But like, yeah. you know, I know a lot of people have birthdays in the fall. But like whether you yeah. have a birthday or you don't, like this could also go hand in hand with like Friday night dinner, Friendsgiving. It's like throw yourself a little party. Yeah. And invite your friends. Yeah. Or like maybe like a virtual party mm. if you haven't like seen someone in a while. Like and a wine night. Yeah, yeah. You can, like reconnect with an old friend. Yeah, reconnecting um, with an old friend is also kind of a trope that happens, of course, as we know, in The Prodigal Daughter Returns, Yeah, which is kind of fall-ish um, in season six. So definitely reconnecting with friends, I think, is super important. Yeah. And maybe if you want to throw a little gathering to do so. It'd be so fun. And invite people maybe you don't know, like make new friends. It's a good yeah. way make to make new, new friends. friends. Keep the old. Mm-hmm. Exactly. One is silver. The other's gold. The other is gold. Are you a silver girly or a gold girly? Gold. Me too. Well, I guess I we just... can't sing the song together. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because one is silver and the other is gold and we're both gold. One is gold and the other is also gold. All right. Nailed it. I changed Fixed it. it. <laughs> I love it. So that is our How to Have a Gilmore Girls Fall Bucket List, which yeah. I love. I loved putting this together with you. I know. It's so I had much so fun. much fun. We're going to actually like really put it together now that we've talked about it and like yeah. post it on our Instagram. And if you want to do any of for the like items, a little, you don't have to do all of them. No, just for like a little guidance, which I love. And yeah. I'm really excited about it. But speaking of fall, we did have our fall merch drop drop uh, this past <laughs> Friday. <laughs> 
We dropped a drop. We dropped a drop this past Friday um, with some of our uh, fall gazebo merch. And we did yes. promise that we were going to pick a winner from our giveaway from releasing our first like unofficial YouTube video of our very yeah. first episode a couple weeks ago um, in our Countdown to Gilmore Girls Fall giveaway. We have a fall gazebo tote bag. Yeah. And the winner. Which we'll let our uh, editor, we'll put it up on the screen. Yeah. If Laurent could um, shoot in some. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some images from our merch drop. Yeah. <laughs> and our winner for this giveaway is Whitney Young, who has been with us since the very beginning. Since the beginning. Which I absolutely I know. love. And so we're so glad you're here, Whitney. And we're going to send you a free tote bag. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all of yeah. our besties for being here. I am so excited that we were able to put this list together. I know. And like, especially like if this merch drop, I feel like it's very fall, mm-hmm. perfect for your Gilmore Girls fall, because you can do your gazebo, because mm-hmm. it's designed by Emily Kelly, who did the winter one last mm-hmm. year. So it's perfect. Or I'd rather be in Stars Hollow. Mm-hmm. I know. But we get to continue the Gilmore Girls fun because next week is Gilmore Girls 23rd anniversary. 23 yes. years since Gilmore Girls debuted. I'm so excited. On October 5th, 2000. Exactly. And we have something kind of fun planned. (laughs) And we'll have more to say on that in the next episode. (laughs) 